Hey guys, Stilther. Let's look at the Scorpion in Armored Warfare. This was one of the requested vehicles from one of you guys. And uh, personally, I've been having a lot of fun with the Scorpion. Now, you may know it from World of Tanks, sorry, not from World of Tanks, from uh, Wargame Red Dragon. And in there, this 76mm unit is not that great. In Armored Warfare, it can be a real pain in the ass. Now, it only fires HE and HESH. Over here you have the upgrade tree and you can see it is a 76 mil weapon system that it's used. And you can only fire HE weaponry. Now it does have a, a couple of different types of shells. You got HE and HESH. Um, personally I haven't found a great deal of difference between these rounds. Maybe HESH does more module damage but it really doesn't explain that in the game. Not that much anyway. It does say that this ammunition deals less damage, but has a chance to cause damage to internal modules. So, hash might be better for flat surfaces. But if you're looking at the damage that it will do, as well as the penetration, you'll get a penetration of 12 millimeters. Now, that is not going to be enough to damage a heavily armored tank. It will always do some damage, usually including module damage. But as you can see, um, only 12 millimeters. That's not even enough to penetrate, say, even the light, the yeah, the lightly armored leopard tanks. But against most other tanks, you can do a ton of damage. Now I have run, sorry, one retrofit on this weapon or on this tank, and that is the experimental propellant, which will give me 5% more damage. Other than that, I have a commander who's mostly versed in, uh, I believe, ammo and cloaking skill. Sorry, camo skill. So I got more vision range, I got uh, faster aiming speed, I got better camo factor, and I have a lower penalty for visibility while shooting. If you fire your gun, you're always going to have a bit more visibility, and this just reduces that a little bit more. Um, this vehicle cannot be upgraded a lot. You do have a couple of engine upgrades, you got a fire suppression upgrade, um, you got a ra laser rangefinder which you can use to improve the accuracy, and you can unlock the improved filter systems which will improve your speed a bit more. Unfortunately I don't really have a slot where I can put that. This one only has one retrofit slot and the others are all blocked off and they cannot be unlocked unlike some other vehicles. There's just no room for them. But you don't really need that on the Scorpion anyways. I personally don't use that many consumables on this tank because once you start to take hits, you're going to be in trouble anyways. So might as well take the hit and not have to spend anything else on the repair consumables. Now let's have a look at how this unit is going to perform in game. Uh, by the way, quick look at the matchmaker. It is pretty much tier 3 and tier 4 at this stage. That seems to be where most people are at. But not all tier 4s are created equally. You can see that I'm joining the match already, so I'm getting pretty fast matchmaking. But for artillery, you can be in the queue for anything up to 3, 3.5 three minutes. That's the worst that I've been in. Even when the matchmaker has, say, 15 or 25 uh, artillery units in the queue, they are still going to let you wait a long time. So keep that in mind. Anyway, back to the Scorpion. Um, you can see it's a pretty diverse matchmaking. We got Leopard 1s on the enemy team, we got Dragoons, BMPs, and even some Tier 1s. So there aren't that many people on at this time of day, and that does mean that you're going to get more diverse matchmaking, like you're seeing right now. This is a desert map, in case you haven't ever seen it before. Um, the area on the right side is completely blocked off by the port. But the port facilities themselves provide good cover for medium tanks and heavy tanks. Um, light tanks, light units, scout vehicles are usually operating in this zone up here in the north. And that's exactly where I'm going to go. So let's head out and show you how fast this unit can actually accelerate. Which is something that you don't get to see in World, uh, sorry, in Wargame. Because the units are just moving at uh, 110 kph but I suppose it is reflected in some way by having an off-road speed of, I believe, 70, maybe 75 for the Scorpion. You can see I'm doing 50 as I'm bouncing over these uh, desert hilltops. 
Now on the bottom left corner of the screen, you can see my camo value, which is down here. I'm half camo, which is pretty good for a unit that's moving in the open at damn near full speed. It makes it hard for them to actually find me without having a good spotter around. Now, as you saw, turning is not something that it does very well. It does take a while for this unit to slow down and actually start getting some grip with its tracks. Now, as I'm stopped, you can see that my camo value is up pretty much all the way. There are even uh, some units that go all the way up, but uh, not the Scorpion. It is still a pretty big target. And as you may have seen, as I move the turret, my targeting reticule improves, where it gets bigger. <coughs> So I suppose you could say it uh, gets worse in some respect. If I just drive in a straight line, it zooms in. And that's because light tanks get a bonus that way. You don't have to... Uh, so, sorry, so long as you don't turn your turret, your accuracy actually improves. I already took a hit there. Pretty heavy heat round from the BMP-1. And I'm going to try and use this cover, but you can see that this tank does not have a lot of gun depression. So I need to get all the way over this ridge, which puts me in a vulnerable position. And makes it so that I can barely hit that path back there. Got it for 237 with a HE round. So don't underestimate the amount of damage that this thing can do. Because um, even as it only fires HE rounds, it can still sting. Which uh, I suppose is appropriate for a vehicle called the Scorpion. Now let's see if I can get another shot in that thing before he gets one into me. 64, and you can see I damaged three modules of his. But the thing that I really want to hit is that one. Because those are not heavily armored. 250 damage there. And with a rate of fire of, I believe, nine rounds a minute, considering I have a 6.52 second reload, I can do a lot of damage quite quickly. I just have to pick off my targets quite carefully. Because the moment you get overwhelmed, it's going to be harder and harder to actually survive. Identified. Now, I have spotted another unit, but it is hiding behind those rocks. Just popped out a second ago. Teams leading by 10 to 15. Let's see. Yep, another shot on the pattern, but this time his armor blocked it a bit better. And you can see that I can pop forward and back right into cover to make sure I don't expose myself for too long. And that's another one down. Now that leopard is still hiding and he has too many hit points for me to go on a one and one with him. But I can actually start to annoy him by doing a bit of damage while the 113s from the side take off the pressure. That is, if I can pass here. <laughs> Which I can. Okay, we're going to have to go up this hill then and try to come at him from the other side. He is probably engaging the Dragoon as well as the scout vehicles that are coming up on the side of him. Identify. And yeah, I got a good flat surface here. So let's fire one right into his engine block. 200 damage. He's turning his turret, but not really towards me. Put another shell into him. 463. Massive damage to this Leopard. And there you go, 271. Now this is going to be my next volunteer. He's not moving out of the way fast enough, so another heavy damage roll there. Thank you, Patton, for saving me. And now it's just 10 to 3, so they're almost out of vehicles. And this was pretty much a quite heavy stomp roll that we got done here. Let's see if I can get another kill, maybe, or some damage done. If you're wondering how to enable those uh, boxes that I have in the top of my screen, the outgoing damage and the incoming damage, I'll show you after the gameplay is done. Because it's a feature that is built into Armored Warfare, but it is hidden by default. Possibly because they don't want to overwhelm people with the amount of information that they can display. Tracked him. And any tracking damage will also add to mine. Let's get another round into him, and there you go. Did 2,000 damage and received 300. So a very, very good damage mark up there. Now, for some reason, this takes quite a while, this victory screen. Um, I think that a couple seconds, maybe two or three seconds, would be long enough, and then go back to the garage. 
But who knows, maybe that's going to change and they're going to improve upon that. Alright, loading complete. Results is that I got, with my premium account, 2400 points of experience, 61,000 credits. And as far as teams go, um, I finished third on my team. With, um, I think, the second most damage done. Which, for a light tank, I think is a pretty damn good result. Now, the game doesn't really display how much damage you did, or what exactly you damaged, but I believe they are still working on that. The only thing you can see is that you killed a specific vehicle and that the rest of it is assist damage. But you can see that if I hover over this it says detailed breakdown coming soon. So they just don't show the amount of assist damage that I did. Um, anyway, with that I got another nice bit of XP. Um, I can upgrade to a laser rangefinder which improves my minimum accuracy but I want my maximum accuracy to be improved. So this is, I suppose you could say, the maximum bloom size of your uh, accuracy. This one improves the minimum accuracy. So you can zoom in further. Now for me this one is more useful because I'm going to be on the move and I don't want my targeting reticule to be blooming up massively because that would mean that at full speed I would miss a target. With this I would uh, guaranteed miss it but I'd be more of a sniper which I don't think is the right role for the scorpion because it also has quite a good spawning range. And with that, it is much, much more useful on the front line. I can go fire suppression, which reduces my engine fire duration by 25% and improves my crew resilience. Um, I haven't really had an engine fire. I had it once out of, I think, 20 games that I played with the Scorpion. So I'm not that worried about taking that upgrade. So instead, I'm going to take my XP and put it here, where I can buy a credit package, giving me another 10,000 10, points of credits for 1350 points of XP. The next step is going to be the Sheridan, so I'm still grinding towards that. And uh, by the way, you will recognize this one from Wargame Red Dragon, if that's the game that you played previously, because this is one of the scout vehicles. Now, about that uh, hitbox or hit log, you go to settings, you go to UI, and there down at the bottom you have hit details. Usually these tick boxes are lit up, which means that the stats are actually hidden. You can uh, make them any size you want. Personally, I'm just going to go with the 100, the standard size. And you can say I want either incoming damage, outgoing damage, or both. And this will also register the damage that you are getting by, say, ramming other vehicles or getting stuck on the terrain, stuff like that. Alright, let's do another battle, see if we can get another map and get you some more details and more gameplay on this vehicle. Personally, as stated, I really, really like it. It is fast, which definitely suits my playstyle. It has quite a nasty sting, but you got to make sure that you flank targets. Because firing HE at a tank, which is showing its frontal armor, is not going to do a lot of damage you got to get those weak side shots, and with that you can do quite a bit of damage. Now this matchmaking is even more fortunate for me. Look at that. I got a lot of tier 2s on the enemy team, even some tier 1s, and the PT-76 barely has any armor, so that would be an ideal target for me. Um, as far as recon vehicles goes, it's pretty even. We both got a couple of LEV-150s, and we have a BMP-1, where they only have uh, sorry, where they have an XM800 so we each got three recon vehicles this map over here you can see that it does have some pretty spectacular effects with I believe a C130 going down right into town there big fireball a couple of Chinooks flying overhead there is usually a second Chinook nearby and of course as I'm making the video I can't find it now for me, um, this map usually splits into two or three streams of units. Over on the right flank, you got tank on tank engagements, so that is frontal armor, that's not where I want to be. Over on the left flank, you got longer range engagements, and over in the middle, you got a lot of urban cover, where I can shoot vehicles that are operating there in the sides. So I want to position myself next to that town, 
try and light up a target with my spawning range as well as maybe get a side shot on something that operates there. So for now I'm perfectly happy staying here. Whoops, a bit further behind. Because I got my buildings on the right as cover um, and forward I can spot quite a lot. Although I could be spotting more with the right upgrades. So I'm going to wait for the BMP-1 to start spotting targets here. T-54 on the right. Uh, he's way too far away for me to be an issue. And you can see that this vehicle really accelerates quickly. I even got an acceleration boost, which you can see down here. It says E, which is the ECU override. Increases engine limit, a lot of blah blah, but it means that um, I improve in acceleration and get a higher top speed. Now, unfortunately, I did not take enough time to get that LEV-150. Let's see if there are other targets of opportunity. Yep, tank there. Fired too early, but he didn't see me. You can see that my camo value dropped all the way down, but he did not see me. Good hit. And that was another 68-point hit. He is still there, but I can barely see him. 72. It's not doing a lot of damage, but it is damaging his modules, and that is absolutely annoying if it happens, because it will make your vehicle less effective. Go now, ahead. I said don't fire at frontal armor, but I really have nothing else I can fire at at this stage. So I'm just going to continue lobbing HE rounds that way. That one missed. You can see a Blackhawk coming over here. Special Operations Blackhawk, since it has that long refueling boom. There's a leopard there. Leopards are my favorite targets of mine because they have so little armor. And that means that my HE rounds are going to be massively effective. Now there's a T-54 here that's getting a bit too aggressive. He may get too close and start sniping me in this side. At which stage I'm going to have to move. But for now I'm going to try and get some more shots on these vehicles. Yep, that's the one I want to get. Hold it there. Come on. Bit more forward. Hold it there. Identify. Awful truck. Thank you. Good hit. It's 268 damage. One more round and he's dead. And they still haven't seen me. There's a PT-76 there. Currently there are still too many vehicles for me to actually engage um, head on or start flanking them or pushing in from their rear. But I'm perfectly happy just doing my damage this way. I have to lead that shot a bit more next time. The Leopard is getting... Yep, now it saw me. And that did hurt me quite a bit. 231, but it was an APFS or an APDS round. So that didn't do as much damage as it could have done. Now, let's fire another round and get the hell out of there. He did see me again. But now he is distracted, so that is taking some pressure off of my allies there. Let's see if I can get this T-54 off guard as he's engaging the T-48 there. Or the uh, Patton 48. I'm not really sure what that was, but that damn near hit me. 62. And now he is in a spread. He has to go for either the Patton or me. He chose the Patton, which was probably the right choice. And that was a miss. Now I can do this dance a lot longer than he can. Jesus. I should have hit that. Now pop out, shell in, pull back. He did get me that time around. I did track him. 60. Uh, I got a shell or a semi shell from another side. I may have bounced that. Now I can just circle this guy. He really does not have a lot of chances here. Another round into him and I got him. Problem is, my team is losing pretty bad at this stage. So I'm going to have to really do a lot of damage here in order to pull this back. That LEV is a pretty big threat to me. I usually dislike auto cannons when I'm in a vehicle that has paper armor. Nailed another one there. Now let's start sniping the other vehicles here. And again, I already did almost 1400 damage here. 
Now, unfortunately, pretty much everything that we had on that I flank died, target. and oh, I got target. spotted by another T-54. Not what I wanted to have happen. Target locked on. Target locked he missed, in. I hit. All right, the, the water was a bad choice because it's massively slowing me down here. Another round in. And again, the Leopard on my left, and a T-54 on my right. So right now, if this guy starts to fire heat into me, that's going to be the end of me. Yep, that got me. Still, I did 1600 damage, but you can see that this thing is not really that effective if you get hit. It does not have a lot of armor, and it is not survivable. Now we got... Um, Probably one AFK or here, which is always nice. So we're just going to report him as uh, <laughs> as the game ends. Really, I usually just report bots. I really, really despise people using bots or loading into the game and then going AFK. I think that's some of the worst behavior that you can show. Anyway, I still got more damage done than I received or than my total hit point value. So I think I was a good contribution to the team here. I think that I got maybe around 900 XP for that one. Because I did die, um, my team didn't win, but I got quite a bit of damage done. So probably in the 900 ranges. A little bit less, 836, 42,000 credits. So this thing still makes credits, even if it loses, and you play well with it. Um, Damage-wise, third on my team. XP-wise, third on my team. So perfectly happy with that result. Anyway, with that, I hope you got a bit of an idea of how this Scorpion works. I really like it. It does require a different strategy than using a main battle tank. Because, for example, the OF-40, this is pretty much a head-on tank. Same goes for the MBT-70. If you look at the stats, these things have frontal hull armor of 250, 250 on the turret. Um, OF-40 has uh, 200 on the turret, 70 on the hull. The Scorpion, completely different unit. Frontal hull is 10 points of armor, and the front of the turret is 10 points of armor. So this thing is not made to take hits. Use that maneuverability, use that agility to dodge shots, and try and find targets which are isolated and or can be singled out. So like you saw me do with that T-54, I was dancing around him, while even if he was moving his turret and his chassis, he just could not turn his turret fast enough to do damage to me. And that is the way that I think the uh, Scorpion should be played. So I hope you liked watching this video. If you did, consider giving it a like. If you're not subscribed yet, please do so, because I will be outputting more uh, Armored Warfare gameplay for you to enjoy. Now, if you have any questions about this vehicle, leave them in the comments and I'll just try and answer them as best I can. And I hope to see you on the battlefield. Feel free to answer at me as a friend here in Armored Warfare. I'm still 17, as in all other games. Um, I will accept your request, but uh, if you have a different username than you do in other games, I may not remember you or recognize you, so forgive me for that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.